Couple classes, singles, doubles. Then the only thing I do not have in those equations here is that that single term is not there in the CCSD because that's a triple excitation directly. And I don't have the quadruple excitation, the, the connected quadruple excitation, and I don't have terms with T3 and T1. But all the other ones are still there. Good, so if I start CCSD and I take the first iteration of the Tijab equations, now I get MP2. So if you have written in CCSD program, you sort of get MP2 for free. Um, now there are some approximations. I mean, this you sort of could say is an approximation to CCSD. It's the first iteration approximation. It's sort of like in your hard to fog equations, you throw the electron electron correlation con interaction completely out. And you solve that equation then. That's with just without any electron correlation. You could do that. You get much too small orbitals, much too compact because they feel the full nuclear charge. Uh, that's sort of the analog to this one here. And there are some other higher level approximations, better approximations to CCSD. There's one. Uh, um, and being in the country we are in, I have to mention that because it was developed here. Uh, it was developed in Aarhus. And that is called CC2. There's a method which is called CC2. And we're going to use it also which is an approximation to CCSD. Um, and what they do is, it is, you take the CCSD equations, which sort of are those now, um, you keep the singles equation as it is, but in the doubles equations you throw a lot of terms out. And one uses some kind of a perturbation theory to put some orders on the different operators and says, okay, you're higher order, you go out. Um, there is a clear, I mean, it's not just sort of look at them, oh, I, don't, I don't like you, uh, I don't know how to calculate you, you go. No, there is a, there's a well-defined perturbation theory approach to do that systematically. And so what you do, you do approximations to the Tijab equations, to the doubles equations. That gives you CC2. When MP2 is also making approximation to doubles equations, uh, equations here you throw everything out except the bare integral divided by orbital energies. This is still equations which depend on the single equations. Um, the, so in CC2 you have a coupling between double and single excitation operators or equations, um, but you have thrown terms out. The next higher level after CCSD would then be CCSDT. This triples. And then you get, you get also another set of equations where you have all triple excited determinants and from each level the number of equations increases dramatically. I mean, there are a few thousand, hundreds of thousand single, ex single excited determinants, millions of double and even more of triples. And you have to solve them all. So CCSDT is really expensive. Um, but as we discussed before, those triple excitations actually are important. 
or unfortunately contrary to the quadruple excitations where the most important quadruple term is that disconnected T2 squared term for the triples it is actually the, T, the bare T3 term the connected triple excitation term which is the important one so saying oh yeah but come on I have some triple excitations here yes but those are not the real important ones um, so that's expensive so you, you won't do that on a really regular basis so what you do is there is a similar method where you do approximations to the and now it's the triple excitations a uh, triple equations a b c equations and that method then surprisingly is called CC3 so that's an approximation to CCSDT it's an approximation to the T equations to the triple equations the CCSD is the same that's all what, it, what there is but you make approximation to this to, so it's always in these CCN methods which were developed in Aarhus it's always the the highest excitation level equation which are approximated to the lowest level of, of the perturbation theory which is lying behind that um, that's also quite an expensive method but it's sort of considered as at least for the kind of properties we're interested in like excitation energies or NMR coupling constants like this is considered to be the best method around which we can afford uh, do you know my PhD student Rasmus? Some of you, he had that program and couple cluster, uh, spin spin coupling constant at the CCSV level as his PhD project. That's one way. The other way uh, is this CCSD parenthesis T. That is CCSD plus something. So that's doing CCSD and then knowing that the triples are important so you write up the you solve the CCSD equations just normally you calculate your CCSD energy so this is the CCSD energy plus we want to have some triples contributions so what you do you take a triples contribution but you don't want to solve this so many very long triples couple cluster triples amplitudes equations so what you do you take the Muller placid fourth order expression for the triples contribution to the energy so you mix the methods so you take just the which we didn't write up on and use it because for that you need the second order wave function from Muller placid perturbation here there you have a triples term so you just take that mp4 triples term and then there's one term more actually which which apparently doesn't cost very much at least not more than this one it's a single triples coupling term also but that's I think is actually from fifth order perturbation theory there are a few other methods around dash t there's also something around, or was around, maybe better, square parenthesis t. Um, this is sort of the same. They all have this. It's out here where the difference is between those cc dash t and cc square root parenthesis t. Sort of what they else included. They all do that. Um, there's sort of a difference and I have to admit I can't remember they all exactly I think I think in the dash t you don't have that actually um, there's one there's one little extra comment to that if you would look at this triples con term to the energy in mp4 you will see and you might sort of remember from our expression I wrote up the second order wave function coefficient that included coefficients from lower order wave function which means includes first order 
wave function coefficient. Now the first order of blessed wave function coefficient are double excited wave functions, so it's the doubles amplitudes. So what one, what one could do, but one does not do, I mean you could calculate that MP4 triples energy with the MP first order doubles coefficients. But you don't do that, you calculate them with the CCSD doubles amplitudes. So you take the expression from MP4 and you feed in your couple cluster doubles amplitudes. And this method, that's sort of, I'd say it's called the golden standard of quantum chemistry. Um, it's used for calculating F, uh, ground state energies. Therefore, it's a lot used for calculating reaction energies or ground state properties. Um, you can't use it for calculating excitation energies. Because in this sort of patchwork way of defining it, um, you can't sort of calculate the excitation energies from it. For that you have to use something like CC3. Uh, 